Welcome back to our Azure VMware Solution technical overview series. In this module, we're going to look at more VMware solutions supported on the platform. We'll talk about Site Recovery Manager, VMware SD-WAN, and VMware NSX Advanced Load Balancer. Starting with Site Recovery Manager. Site Recovery Manager for Azure VMware Solution provides customers with the flexibility and scaling of AVS with the automation and orchestration of SRM. This solution lets customers use their AVS Private Cloud as a failover target or source site while providing enterprise-level SLAs for mission-critical applications. Organizations are always looking for ways to reduce costs and overhead, and SRM on AVS enables that by eliminating the requirement for a dedicated DR site. You can keep a small private cloud deployed with just enough storage to handle your replicated data, and in the event of a failover, simply scale out your cluster to handle the compute resources required by your applications. Uh, recall that you are charged only for deployed hosts, not host quota assigned, so you can request quota sufficient to run your whole footprint in the event of a DR event, but only grow the cluster when you need to. While Microsoft manages the deployment, patching, and overall lifecycle of SRM and vSphere replication on AVS, the solution is sold and supported by VMware and VMware partners. This is a different license than traditional on-premises licensing. The new license SKU is Site Recovery Manager for Hyperscalers, and that is sold in packs of 25 VMs for one and three year terms. A little more about why SRM, uh, multi-cloud unified operations, unified operations, cross-cloud DR, the same SRM experience everywhere. Uh, scalability, you can build protection groups and recovery plans that can recover thousands of VMs, you know, all managed from that single console, and time to recovery, uh, near zero RPO and RTO on a VM basis. Overall architecture of SRM and AVS is very similar to traditional on-prem architecture, We're using all the same components, uh, vSphere clusters, vCenter server, SRM, vSphere application appliances, or configuring protection groups and recovery plans. Uh, one key difference here is that array-based replication is not supported, since traditional storage arrays aren't used uh, within Azure or for AVS. Instead, we use vSphere replication, which allows customers to protect their applications at the VM level versus the data store level. This provides RPOs of near zero, ranging from five minutes to 24 hours. Uh, we support the standard SRM scenarios uh, planned migration, which allows VMs to be migrated to the cloud without data loss, uh, with both sites running and fully operational, great for migrations. Uh, disaster recovery um, orchestrates the recovery process so that if the protected site is offline, we can use the last known good replication of each VM to bring them up in the AVS environment with uh, minimized data loss and downtime. And we can do bi-directional protection, where each site can be a protected and recovery site, but for a different set of VMs. And one of the great things about SRM on AVS is the simplified installation. The deployment of the SRM and vSphere replication appliances is fully automated within the Azure portal, uh, cutting down on deployment time and getting you to protected quicker. Uh, VMware SD-WAN is supported for connectivity to AVS resources. Uh, this can be a huge cost savings using HCX over SD-WAN versus configuring private express route connections. There's built-in performance optimization and built-in edge security, uh, allowing you to put employees first with device choice, flexibility, and seamless, consistent, high-quality experience then ease the move to zero trust with situational intelligence and connected control points. There are a couple of deployment options. Uh, you can do this with SD-WAN integration into Virtual WAN Hub, or you can connect to Azure Route Server in a transit VNet. Uh, Azure Route Server would be deployed in the same VNet as the Express Route Gateway connected to AVS, uh, configured with the SD-WAN Edge cluster as a peer, and you'd enable branch to branch to allow routes to be exchanged. NSX Advanced Load Balancer offers local and global load balancing, web application firewall and app security, uh, IPAM, and app analytics and insights for any app on any cloud, all managed through a central, consistent interface. Benefits of this uh, on AVS, uh, scalability and performance, elastic scalability and performance tuning, uh, intent-based provisioning. You define the parameters of the service, NSX ALB figures out how to best configure it and scale it and support for end-to-end -end automation, uh, APIs for everything. Analytics and observability, uh, you've got app user and security insights, this actionable application infrastructure health score for each service, end-to-end -end timing for the app uh, for every network hop. Uh, you can review app performance in real time, past 30 minutes, day, week, month, and you can get an app-centric topological view of VIPs, pools, and pool members. You can search and filter through logs. You can review and troubleshoot each transaction without the need for TCP dumps. There's an adaptive feedback engine driving that capacity management, uh, driving 
uh, scaling, and event placement, all triggered by observed application performance. And for operational support, you've got, again, that central orchestration, a uh, single policy endpoint, giving you operational consistency across the platform, regardless of what cloud you're deploying load balancing services to. Each AVS private cloud has its own instance of vCenter and NSXT. From the NSX ALB management console, you create a new NSXT uh, cloud connector with credentials for the AVS, NSX manager, and vCenter. And the controller then discovers NSX and vCenter configurations such as logical segments, transport zones, and clusters. From there, the controller can automate the provisioning of service engines within that environment, extending the local and global traffic management, app security and WAF, and analytics features to AVS workloads. From the admin perspective, uh, they define a virtual service to front an application, and the controller takes it from there. It'll determine if there's a service engine with sufficient resources available, and if not, it will create one by initiating a VM creation operation using an OVF in the content library. It'll connect the service engine to the proper network if needed. It'll configure VIP static routes on NSX distributed routing, and it will configure NS groups, uh, network security groups, with SEs as members and TCP UDP services used in the load balancing pool. Use cases within AVS, uh, highly available active-active or hybrid expansion. Uh, we may have multiple instances of an application configured with local load balancing within a data center or cloud region. We can stamp that configuration out across data centers or cloud regions, and then link those local instances with uh, GSLB to get geo-based load balancing for optimal performance and resilience. In a DR scenario, if one local site goes down, we can automatically redirect to surviving sites. We can also use this to support a more phased application migration approach, uh, one that is less lift and shift and more expand and contract. Uh, in a traditional AVS lift and shift migration, we would leverage HCX to extend layer two networks from the on-prem data center to the AVS private cloud, and then either do a live vMotion or cold migration to pick up the workload as is and move it, retaining network configuration. Depending on your application and needs though, it, it may make more sense to deploy additional instances of your application in the AVS private cloud add both instances to GSLB for a period of coexistence and testing, and then remove the on-prem instances when you're fully ready to cut over. Now, the big theme here is that the functionality you can expect in AVS is not really that different from the functionality you get on-prem, and that's exactly the point. Consistent operations, familiar interfaces, but cloud scale and elasticity. So to recap, we talked about VMware Site Recovery, we talked about VMware SD-WAN, and VMware NSX Advanced Load Balancer. In the next module, We'll talk about AVS availability, maintenance, and remediation. Thank you.